Uh, thanks for being here first session. I'm going to pretend that I'm a morning person and really project excitement and happiness over this topic that I really care pretty deeply about. Um, and I'm going to assume you're like me and you hit the show floor yesterday, all excited, footloose and fancy free, jogged out there like, I'm going to find the best stuff today. I'm, I'm ready to seize the world. And then just got promptly overwhelmed and dazzled by the immense amount of things out there. Ran back home, got in bed, put on the Kardashians, and, and <laughs> fell asleep, which was basically what, what happened to me yesterday, except replace Kardashians with Naked and Afraid. And I, you know, about four straight episodes of that, it was, it was, it was pretty sad. Um, but you know, beyond looking at conferences and show floors, there are some tried and true ways we generally find tools. And uh, the Gates Foundation actually did a study on this, polled a bunch of teachers like yourselves and said, how are you locating good stuff? And the results were kind of expected. Um, not surprisingly, teachers like yourselves look to other teachers for advice, you know, what are you using? Usually teachers in, in your same school under the same kinds of conditions. You know, the other options are asking administrators or just doing the searching yourselves. These are decent ways, but they're time consuming themselves and they're, the results are often a bit mixed. But the message is clear that you want another educator, teacher's perspective on this to find good stuff. And often you're not getting that if you're Googling. You know, the, the top search results in Google are often bought. Um, and those aren't usually the best. Um, uh, administrators often have your best interests in mind, but have a lot of other pressures with what they're recommending. Um, other educators in your school, they're also facing the same pressures, so their recommendations are often suffering the same mistakes that you have, looking on Google and having a limited um, knowledge of the breadth of stuff out there. So the challenge here is that, well, everyone's a teacher and you don't have the time to sift through all of this stuff. I mean, there's literally 80,000 apps on the iTunes store alone for learning. That's just iTunes. And that's just learning apps. You know, if you throw in Android and you throw in apps that aren't for learning, that number triples and it's growing every week. It's, it's insane. You'd actually probably need a full-time job alongside teaching to find good stuff. Um, luckily, um, thankfully there's someone <laughs> whose full-time job it is to help you find great stuff. And that person may not be Ryan Gosling, but that person is the next best thing. I can assure you, and that's me. Um, so it is actually my full-time job, as well as my colleagues, Aaron and Jeff at Graphite, to find good stuff. That's what we do professionally. Um, and we sort through that stuff and try to be your perfect colleague here, um, offering you recommendations that is going to make you, your job easier and save you time and hopefully money. Uh, so what have we learned doing this for um, a little over two years now, um, looking really closely at this landscape, trying to find good stuff? Here are some quick tips that I have, um, some lessons learned. The first is... Be a bit wary of, I'm sure you're, you're, you're well aware of the edu-celeb thing in ed tech. It, um, you know, people with large followings on social media, uh, really popular blogs. They're often super knowledgeable. They became edu-celebs for a reason. Um, but there's some suspicion there. They're, their recommendations are often sponsored and they might not be disclosing this. So they have other reasons for recommending the tools. They're not necessarily an unbiased third party source. I would say this goes for some other ratings and review aggregators out there. Um, I would um, levy the same notes of caution. 
I would say while Pinterest is really great for low tech ideas, the tech ideas there sometimes lack. And I would say go to Twitter. Um, if you're not already active on Twitter, get more active on Twitter. It can be an incredible way to find out about the latest and greatest. It's very current. And I think the chats are super helpful here. Often chats have, you know, they're organized in a question and answer format. And one of the questions is often, for this topic area, what are the tools out there you're using? And you'll get a lot of quick recommendations. I try to tune into, I have a little calendar alongside my desk. I try to tune into the chats and see what people are talking about and find tons of great new stuff there. Ed Surge's newsletter is a must have. It's a great source. I forget how many they put out. I think they might even put out daily um, newsletters, but at the bottom they'll have, and some of these are sponsored, some of them are not, they'll announce new products and they announce who's getting startup money um, and it's a real fresh way. This is my tried and true method um, for finding new stuff. Ed Surge, subscribe to it if you're not already and really dig into it. Now I kind of started off talking about how expo floors can be overwhelming. Uh, one of my recommendations for those is go to smaller booths. Um, a lot of the best companies, the companies I think are making the best products, just don't have the money that a Pearson has. Um, and they're the ones actually innovating, uh, these smaller booths. Go to the startup pavilion. There's about 20 companies there really doing forward thinking stuff, um, having with great demos. Um, walk the edges of the floor. Look for those little tiny pockets. They often have the coolest stuff and they're often offering it for free because they're in startup mode. Like we just need people using this. And they usually have really good support because they're like, oh my God, someone wants to use our products. Thank you. Well, you know, they really handhold you in a really productive way. Um, most importantly, the app store is a mess. It's a disaster. The, the Apple, Google Play stores, their ratings are useless. Um, all you really find out looking at app store ratings is if something's broken. Because that's really only when people go there. As they say, it's not working for this iOS version, this thing is broken. Or you see a bunch of five-star ratings all at the same language because companies pay people or just get their entire company to go on there and give them five-star ratings. It's, there's no usable information in the App Store. And while you may be able to find some of the top trending most purchased apps, you're not going to be able to find hidden gems on the App Store. It's, just, it's impossible. Um, I would also say that having looked at a lot of stuff over the past two years, looking outside of, of tools branded EDU learning, there's a lot of valuable tools that can be actually the most useful things for you that aren't really even designed for learning. You probably know this already. The things you really rely on aren't even designed necessarily with teachers in mind, but they're flexible platforms for learning. This is how Minecraft became an amazing tool in the classroom. It, you know, the, the person who designed Minecraft had learning not in mind at all. And suddenly it's become one of the most useful tools for learning. There's a lot of that kind of stuff out there that can be adapted. Um, and it, if you just pay attention to the larger tech space and find stuff that you're actually using for your personal use and think about creative ways to adapt it, I think that's an, a really great way to go. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the kind of subtext here, which is that there's also a service that Common Sense Education has designed from the ground up with all of these concerns in mind as a way to solve these problems. Um, and that's Graphite, Common Sense Graphite. So let's take a look here. So we took all of this information in, we hired this staff and said, people don't have time, they don't have money, teachers are struggling to sort through all of this mess. And what we did was we ended up creating a reviews and rating system, one that you can trust, um, that's in the pocket of no one, that is run entirely by um, educators, 
uh, former educators with a review staff that's trained on a research-backed rubric uh, with editors like myself who are looking through, doing the hard work on the show floors, trying to find the best of the best and doing rigorous reviews and ratings. We have 2,000 editorial reviews at this point. Um, and if you go to the reviews and ratings site, you can filter down by your subject area, your grade area, even skills like social emotional learning or purpose, like I want a great presentation app. We're, we designed it so quickly you can find exactly what's applicable to you. And if you dig into a review, you can see that it is at a level like none other out there. Um, we spend a lot of time with these things. We look at them very, very closely for learning quality, how it might be able to be used, rating it across three dimensions, pedagogical value, how much it engages students, the support it offers teachers and students. Um, and we, we give it a rating that we feel you can really trust. But you don't just have to trust us. We have a community of teachers, thousands of teachers, of which you could be one right after this session, contributing 7,000 reviews already. That's nearly four reviews per editorial review. Um, and you go to the bottom of the review, you can see those opinions from the field advice on this stuff. Um, really deep in depth, different types of classroom situations. You're getting all those different perspectives. Educators like yourself are also contributing lesson flows. So you get to find this stuff, but then they show you how they can use it. Um, in the classroom, in concert with other kinds of technology. We try to connect you to relevant related products. We hand choose those at the bottom of there. That's not an algorithm. That's a human being saying, oh, this thing? I know these other things that are really great that are similar if this one's not quite going to work for you. Uh, we're really upgrading this um, at, at ISTE with these new What's New pages that we'd love you to check out and give us some feedback on. This is something we're thinking about right now. We've just launched Math and ELA. We're hoping to expand through all subject areas, skill areas, key topics like game-based learning. This is your cover story, your front page, where we're going to update every two weeks. Editors like Aaron here hand picks what we're, we're calling the cover story of this page trying to come up with interesting topics that might be relevant to you with a selection of best-in-class resources from across Graphite. Reviews, lessons, top picks lists that hopefully inspire you, help you discover new things or help uh, uh, inspire new lessons. There's discussion here that you can talk about the topics of the day. Some of our Graphite certified educators who are community mentors are there to help if you've got questions. Uh, down at the bottom here, grade banded, we have uh, the most recently top rated pro um, products by all of you out there. So you can find what people are rating highly that day, um, if it would pop up. Well, here it is. Um, you can see these are top rated products. These are lesson flows that people are loving and liking. Every time we update one of our probably most popular content type, we do best of lists. We have 150 best of lists. That's going to grow to 180 by the end of the year in every kind of topic area you can imagine. Um, every time we update those on these pages, they bubble up, and you'll know exactly when we add something new to the best coding tools for elementary. Uh, our search is pretty amazing. So let's look at coding here. So you go to the search, you type in something like coding, and there's a bunch of tabs at the top. You can do this on your phones or on your computers. And we really upgraded search. So you type in the search string, and you can search across all of our content. So you can see what reviews we have that connect to coding. You can see what teacher reviews we have that connect to coding. You can see top picks list, boards, which are the community's top picks list. It gives you thousands and thousands, and I'm saying literally thousands of results of what is out there in the space for coding from us, the editors, from you, the community, all across the board. Um, I use it constantly when I'm trying to you know, design lessons or come up with new ideas. I'm actually looking to see what people are talking about and saying and finding and constantly getting inspired by what, by what people have found on, on the site itself. What we also have are 
you know, I mentioned this, boards where you go through the site and you can save everything you see, every little piece of content you can save to your little desk, mm -hmm. then curate into Pinterest-like boards mm -hmm. that then you can share with your colleagues. So I started off talking about how the best recommendations come from all of you. If you're that go-to person in your school that everyone's saying, what's the latest, hottest, coolest thing? What do, I'm a, you know, a math teacher, middle school, what do I do? I, I want to try tech. You can go on Graphite, create a little board by, based on what you found of lessons, products. Create that board, share it out. It's like your best of list. You can send everyone to that link and it's a great little board that they can then sh take from save what's relevant to them, create their own board, and, and pay it forward. Uh, that's kind of the gist. I, I hope it's clear that we've designed it um, from the ground up with, with you in mind to solve these key problems. Thank you.